Well, as a nation mourns the loss of Ratan Tata, let's turn the clock back and celebrate his life and the person on this special show, Remembering Ratan. I have four individuals with me from totally different walks of life and stages as well, but I have one common theme. They've had the privilege of working with and interacting with Ratan Tata. I have with me Bharat Puri, who's the MD of Pidilite. He's worked with Ratan Tata during his stint at Mondelez and also currently sits on the board of Tata Consumer. Sanjeev Kapoor, who we all know as the chef, has worked with the Tata Group on many projects and closely collaborated with Ratan Tata as well. We'll be joined by Ambi Parmeswaran, who's a former ad man at FC Biulka, has a lot of insight on his interaction with Ratan Tata at Tata Motors, a lot of the key launches, insightful stories that he'll bring as well. And we have with us Yash Kotak, who's the youngest in this panel right now, but the co-founder of Bohiko. That's among the first few companies in which Ratan Tata had made a personal investment about seven years ago. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, for taking the time out for Ratan Tata. Let's remember Ratan. Uh, Mr. Puri, let's uh, come to you first. You know, you've had um, an interesting uh, intertwining of lives with uh, Mr. Tata. First up, when you were at Mondelez, he was sitting on the Mondelez Global Board. And then now you at uh, the Tata Consumer Board as well. Tell us about some of these anecdotes that, uh, you know, you've had with him, some of the specific time that you've spent with him. Thank you. Thank you, Mangalam. Firstly, sad day. I mean... This is one of those days when you feel that a family member has passed away because he's just one of those Indians who make you proud to be an Indian. Totally. Uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, you know, Mr. Tata was part of the Mondelez board. I think the chair lady of Mondelez, Irene Rosenfeld, and he were on at Cornell together, and she therefore uh, persuaded him to join the Mondelez board. Mondelez would have an annual board retreat in one of these lovely locations in the U.S. At one of the retreats, I think it was at Cape Cod, I was the lone Indian senior manager there at that retreat, and therefore I was given charge of looking after Mr. Tata when he was there. And it was, I must say, an absolute pleasure. I mean, two things really stood out. One, his humility, his gentlemanliness. I mean, he's just, he, he would wear his achievements, his title or his name very, very lightly and absolutely willing to give time at any point of time. The second was his concern for others. You know, I remember he's turning to me and said, you people spend so much time discussing half a percent of market share, but shouldn't you be discussing that, you know, in emerging markets, can your confectionery be used uh, to smuggle in vitamins, to smuggle in nutrition? You don't spend enough time discussing things like that. And, you know, it was wonderful because you could see that he was different and he was somebody who was deeply concerned and I, it left a great mark on me because here is somebody who is first and foremost concerned about others rather than worried about, you know, just the company and its achievements. Right. And I was fortunate again to interact with him at Bombay House. I think the same qualities stand out. His courtesy, his humility, that old ad adage of, you know, a fruit-laden tree, the more fruit it has, the more it bends. I mean, he embodied it. Right. You know, that, that's something that uh, is a sentiment which has been echoed by everyone who's ever interacted with him. And a lot of people who haven't even interacted with him, just the aura around him was of humility. You said you were entrusted with the duty of taking care of him. Was there anything specific that he required that you need to take care of him? And is, are there any stories that you have from there? He was the easiest person to take off because he was thoroughly embarrassed. I would walk him to his, you know, this place was had these beautiful villas at Cape Cod and I would walk him to the villa first. He would refuse to take any form. He would say, no, we'll walk. And uh, he would be very embarrassed. Why you? I know I can find my way to the villa. I mean, you know, I'll be there and I'll be there to pick him up. And again, he would say, this is I, I'll reach the conference room. Don't worry. But I said, Mr. Tata, it's a pleasure for me to spend these 10 minutes walking with you. So, I mean, you know, uh, please don't think that it's in any... Uh, hassle for me it's just just wonderful i mean we talked about the you know unfortunate and very sad uh, bombay terror blasts and his handling of that with taj and you know his the way he looked after taj employees i mean those little walks will always remain you know part of my fondest memories mangalam 
All right, we will talk about some of those as well and uh, probably get you to share some of the business insights that he spoke with you as well. But we do have with us uh, Sanjeev Kapoor. Now, we know Sanjeev as the chef. We know Sanjeev as uh, the entrepreneur. But if you look at Ratan Tata's Instagram feed, you know, what stands out is, one, the last message that he had given to everyone who was watching. And the second one is a collaboration with you on a lot of these business and, uh, you know, charity pro projects. Sanjeev, your specific interactions with him and things that you took away. Uh, thank you. Uh, indeed, a very sad day, as Bharat uh, said. Uh, I, I think uh, there, there are many uh, things that are unsaid between him and I. I think those are more uh, important to me. The, those are things that I remember more, I would uh, say. My uh, first, I won't say interaction, but first time I saw him, I had uh, just started doing uh, TV and uh, this was, uh, I think he's just become the uh, chairman. This was in U.S. club. And I was struggling with uh, my fame because uh, I, I didn't really have money, but I was becoming famous. I didn't know how to deal with it. There were too many people who were telling you what to do, what not to do. And I, I was confused. People say, don't travel by auto, don't do this, wear this, drive in this car, do all of that. And uh, one day, uh, while I was trying to find answers, I saw uh, uh, Mr. Tata uh, at uh, US Club uh, with a dog sitting and uh, he was uh, he was the top guy and uh, th there was uh, no fuss no confusion on uh, who he was uh, what he had achieved and uh, he was uh, he was in control without anyone around him there was no security there was no rush there was nothing and i was thinking to myself that oh my god why was i making too much of all of this what was happening with me here is what you have to learn. So, over the years, uh, I have, uh, I would say, uh, learned uh, so much uh, from him. Uh, and, and in particular, I, I would say that uh, four things uh, that I have uh, learned, uh, of course, uh, humility is something I think uh, right there. But I, I would say that uh, trust is something uh, which uh, uh, Tata's, uh, for me, Growing up, Tata's was a name, it was a family name. The only person that I uh, put, uh, the face that I put to that uh, name was uh, Mr. Ratan Tata. So to me, uh, that, that became uh, a trusted uh, name. Humility, uh, definitely, that was uh, there. And I would say that uh, in terms of uh, compassion, what, what, uh, what we have uh, seen is uh, unparalleled. You talked about uh, my collaboration. I would say that uh, with Tata Group, I have had so many collaborations. My first ad was no brand ambassadorship. It wasn't the contract. wasn't for. It was appearing in an ad. It was for Tata Salt. To uh, till date, I continue to, uh, to be uh, associated in many many ventures, uh, including joint ventures uh, in some sense uh, with Tata. So I've been I've been fortunate. Uh, so. I would say that I've been modeling my life quietly uh, on what he has been showing the way to the world. And uh, in me, there is, uh, I would say that, uh, not, not just a follower, I feel like a son. He was almost my dad's age. Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm tempted to ask you, uh, when was the last time you met him? And uh, I'm sure uh, you all would have discussed food at some point as well, because we had Rajiv Bajaj speak about, you know, him removing the silver tray and giving tea, some cake as well. Uh, wh what were those interactions like? Actually, I would I would say that uh, uh, in in terms of my my association with him was not around the food. I was in so much of awe. It was never about uh, food. It was not what. Uh, I could uh, uh, give him, I, I was, uh, I would say, selfish. It was uh, what I could take away, all the precious moments that were there. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, recently, a few weeks uh, ago, a couple of months ago, uh, I spoke to um, my dear friend, Puni Chatwal, who had just met him. And he told me that uh, how uh, uh, how important it was for him and uh, how, uh, how much uh, he loved him. And... Uh, I have never asked uh, to meet anyone in my life that I want to meet this person. Actually, I told Puni, I said, I'll go with you. Wow. 
Wow, that's interesting. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Puri, let's come back to you because uh, not only are you sitting on the board of Tata Consumer, you're sitting on the board of Tata Motors as well. And these two are companies which are, uh, you know, which were important to take India to the world. Tata Consumer, first up, largely because of the Tetley acquisition that they did in 2000. And thereafter, Tata Motors, we all know the big, uh, you know, Jaguar Land Rover acquisition as well. What about his business insight did you pick up in the interactions that you've had with him? I think, you know, the wonderful thing was he spoke little, but he, when he spoke, you needed to listen because there was wonderful, clear insight. And I've always said, you know, and insight is blindingly obvious until somebody else uh, says it. Until then, it doesn't occur to you. His ability to see the big picture, look at and identify the critical issue and talk about just one or two of those issues and pick from his experience. Again, was something in Mondelez, which actually I must tell you fascinated everybody. Uh, a lot of my colleagues uh, with me at Mondelez and said that, listen, he speaks little, but when he does, you need to listen. And uh, it, it's also, it tells you about the man one of my colleagues wanted to persuade him. You know, he was looking after Asia Pacific. He was an American. Then, listen, uh, Mr. Tata, the greatest thing would be if you came and did a town hall at Mondelez, India. And very tentatively, we approached him. Mr. Tata was just so generous. He said, yes, I will do it. And he actually came to Mondelez, India and did a town hall with all of the employees because he was a board member of Mondelez Worldwide. I mean, that just tells you, it tells you all about the man in just that one instance. All right, we take that point. Uh, just before we slip into a short break, I'll, I'll, I'll invite both Ambi and Yash as well. Ambi, of course, has uh, worked on uh, a lot of the, you know, Tata Motors launches when he was the ad man at uh, FCB Ulka. Ambi, you know, just briefly, if you could tell us about your interaction with him. I remember that story of, uh, you know, him actually going down just before the launch of a car and talking specifically about a particular paint. Um, you, you tell that really well. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a sad day. Um... Uh, for all of us, uh, we've really lost a gem. So my interaction with him, uh, I worked on the Tata Motors business for almost 20 years, and we launched the Tata Indica and then the Tata Indigo. And the story which I've written about in my book, uh, Sponge, is about the launch of the Indigo Marina. Uh, the launch was in the evening at 7.30, and I get a call uh, from my client, Mr. Krishnan, saying, look, Mr. Tata is going to NCPA, and can you be there? So I rushed and I, I went there and uh, I was waiting for him and he came and uh, he got out of his car and uh, he went towards this uh, so-called almost like an electroplated uh, silver looking car. So uh, he went around it and I was there and there were two engineers that come from uh, Pune were also there and then he called me and he probably uh, had seen me as one of the agency guys. So. Uh, he asked me, what do you think about the car? What do you think about the color? Uh, and I looked, went around it and uh, I told him, yeah, it's looking fine, looking great. And um, then he pointed to some little corner of the car and said, do you think this will uh, be noticed? I said, no, nothing will be noticed. Then he asked me for a for the layout of how the show is going to happen. And I told him where the car will be parked. Uh, why is the car? He asked me, why is the park? So, you know, after all that, he said thank you. And then he spent some time talking to the two engineers. And then he left. Uh, I was curious, saying, why did he, why did the chairman of such a large group drop everything and then come to check the color of the car at uh, one o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon? Uh, and then the engineers told me that, you know, Mr. Tata had wanted, I'd seen this kind of an electroplated looking car in one of his international, you know, uh, auto meets, and he wanted the engineers to try that. Apparently, they tried it, uh, it didn't look good. So a month previous to the launch, he had told them, I don't think we know what we are doing. That's fine. Uh, you know, uh, this is something we have tried. It, it's not working. It's fine. But the engineers there were kind of relentless. They, they tried again and they called him uh, saying, look, we have the car. You know, can we use it for the launch? So he kind of, it's a curiosity, uh, the joy of discovering something new. Uh, you know, he, 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 I think, you know, as a CEO, uh, it's something which one learned from him that the curiosity, the learning mindset, how as a chairman of the group, he discovered something new, like an electroplated looking car. He came and briefed his engineers about it uh, and he encouraged them to try it out. And when they 
when they kind of failed, he said, fine, no problem. We will do something else. But then when they actually managed to do it well, he dropped everything. He dropped everything in his office and he said, okay, I'm going to come and see this. And he came, saw this, put his hand. I mean, I could literally see the camaraderie among the chairman of uh, India's largest group and uh, uh, an engineer working on in the ERC, Engineering Research Center in Tata Motors, the kind of camaraderie they had. And he, he spent another 10 minutes talking to them. Uh, and they were very, very thrilled. Uh, so I said, look, this is what you know, management gurus talk about building a learning organization uh, and how from the top uh, you show the what I call the learning mindset, the curiosity mindset, and then you kind of drill it right through into the company. And I saw that, I saw that uh, in action, uh, which is what I captured in my book, uh, Sponge, uh, uh, right. lessons I learned from my clients. And it's also part of a podcast I've done uh, on that with right. uh, Midoshi. So, you know, I've, I've had occasional right. meetings with him, my daily, my regular meetings right. were not with him, but these are the kind of occasions one really remembers and cherishes that how Absolutely. the, yeah, the, the curiosity, right. learning is great. Yeah, thank you. It, it's great indeed. You know, what we'll do is uh, fascinating stories. We'll, we'll take a short break, come back. We'll hear Yash's side of the story as well because they literally cornered Ratan Tata into going ahead and investing in uh, their company. So while we've spoken about his business, Acumen, we've spoken about his, uh, you know, life and times, his humility. Let's get in his investor's hat as well. Take a short break, come back, and we'll continue our chat.